Assembling up some Warhammer heroes today on Fresh Tips. Check it out. Hi there, Chris here with another fresh tip for you all. In this video, we are going to take a look at the new Warhammer Heroes Series 4. And in the unboxing video, which you can click uh, in the upper right corner there and check the, the unboxing videos, uh, how I came to decide which box to open. And here we're just having a quick look at the assembly guide, which is inside, I would assume, each box. Uh, really straightforward assembly instructions. Now, the one thing that I will note that is quite interesting uh, with this assembly guide is that it does, you know, pretty much cover the bases, especially for somebody who's brand new to this hobby. And I think one of the interesting things here is, as I'll demonstrate, the um, ability to push the parts free from the frame. Normally, with all of us war gamers and modelers and hobbyists, we use clippers to remove parts. But here with these frames, they design them with the absolute newbie in mind when uh you know assembling up these models they're push fit and yeah you require no glue no tools you can just simply take the parts and assemble the model and away you go mind you though uh as you can see here as we have a closer look there are little nubs that occur and so it is better to take a hobby knife or you know a uh, mold line scraping tool or anything like that to knock those little uh, nubs down and typically with the uh, hobby knife i blade off the initial part and then it will turn the blade perpendicular to the model surface and begin kind of scraping down the surface and planing that face down uh, to get it nice and smooth now this is normally the kind of steps you do when you are really concerned about uh, you know, making a nice, clean, finished end result of a miniature once we get painting it and everything like that. But for everybody else out there, uh, there are simpler tools out there, like, for example, this hobby uh, mold line scraping tool. Uh, this is the newer one from Citadel, and it does the job really, really well. And here it even has this little notch here, which is designed for these little bases. You can see here, it would just... It is the perfect length and width and it gets right into that surface and it planes it nice and smooth and i figured i'd just demonstrate this just for everybody watching this because i'm going to assume that our, there are some of you out there who are really new to this hobby and you've clicked this video and you're like ah, i don't know what to do i want to watch this and see if this helps hopefully this helps there are many tools but again as i demonstrated you can just simply free these parts from the frame and you know away you go sort of thing um but Otherwise, with the smaller parts, now here, um, this is a shin plate as well. This is part one and two, and I'm following the instruction guide. Is it five and six? One of the, one, I can't remember what they are. Anyway, you pay attention to the frame. The parts are numbered. You pay attention to your assembly guide and just go through the steps. When you have that little box on the assembly guide, you can see there's a little white box and it shows. Do that box first before going on to the rest of the assembly. Here I'm just demonstrating that, yeah, we're, we're even with the, uh, the the clippers, you still end up with little bits of nub and you still have to clean them off. But the main benefit is, is that you don't risk uh, bending parts or, you know, cause sometimes the models will have like little antennae and little fiddly parts. And when you're busting them off the frame like that with your, with just your strength of your hands, you will stress that plastic. And when you know you've done that, you'll see the plastic turn kind of white, depending on whatever color plastic it is, even if it's just gray, you, it will turn white. Uh, as you can see, like uh, when you are clipping off parts and stuff like that, you'll see little white bits of the plastic. That's the plastic going under stress. And, and that's not good. It'll weaken the, the, the plastic and you know down the road, it could be a problem. Now you'll see here on the back of this leg, there's the little seam line. It's really, really small. But again, this is the extra steps that typically a lot of war gamers will go through and modelers will go through to make sure that they have a nice smooth surface. I'm just going to use my hobby knife. I'm not going to bother using the mold line scraping tool for this. And with this, I just simply hold the blade perpendicular to the surface and lightly drag it across and it just knocks that little line down. You can see the little shave marks and that is fine. But once we throw primer on this model, that'll disappear and it, it'll all look really uniform and flush and it'll look just the way you want it to look. It'll look closer to the box art than not doing it. So I highly, highly recommend taking the time to do these kinds of steps. Now, interior details, like inside the shin there where that armor plate will cover that over, I'm not too worried about that mold line. So it's really only the mold lines that are very visible to the viewer and to yourself as well. 
Now, when doing curved surfaces like shoulder pads, knee, uh, feet, anything like that, uh, typically uh, I'll use the mold line uh, scraping tool or my blade, but sometimes it does require a, a, a sanding tool, like a file or something like that. So here I'm just using a, a metal file, small metal file, very lightly, and I'm just running it along the surface and I'm changing the angle. You notice that the bit I'm holding, uh, I changed the angle a little bit and just, just so I don't get no flat surfaces as I'm moving the file along. And with that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Again, it can take some time. If you avoid all these steps and just simply break them off the sprue, stick them together. Yeah, you'll be done this thing in like five minutes. But if you want to take your time, it'll take probably more close to like 20, 25 minutes to uh, clean this and have it all looking right. But doing this step right from the start will help you in the long run as you develop in this hobby because your miniatures are going to look better. And even if we don't even get to this model right away, even though we've taken the time to properly clean it and everything like that, it's already off to a way better start. And even if we slapped a base color on this, just one color, and it would already look really, really great. Here, I'm just demonstrating, just cleaning off the small little parts and everything like that. And again, uh, when you're using your hobby knife, cut away from yourself. Um, when you see me using the tool on the plastic, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. It's not a lot. To glue the parts together, I'm gonna use Tamiya Extra Thin. Citadel uh, has their own uh, plastic cement. I highly recommend using plastic cement as opposed to using, um, you know, uh, CA glue, Siono acrylate glue, super glue, right? Uh, just because it does not form, it forms a strong bond, but it's not a very good bond, especially for small plastic parts like this. This type of glue melts the plastic and I only applied it on that seam line where that armor plate met up with the rest of the leg applying a bit of pressure there and that's it that's all you need and you just give it about 15 20 minutes to uh set up and you can come back and continue working and which is what i'm doing here here i'm demonstrating that peg going into that leg might feel like a bit of a tight fit now if you're just simply going about and not using any glue not using any tools yeah just slap it together and carry on with your day for those of you who want to take it just a little bit further i'm going to show you typically what i do for these kind of push fit type models to make sure that peg does not interfere with the assembly um obviously because sometimes the, the it can have a gap in the parts and everything like that so here i'm basically uh just holding the blade running it along that peg uh, at about a 45 degree angle to that surface. So it's not quite perpendicular. It's a 45 degree angle. And it's just to uh, put a bevel onto that peg. So it slides into the hole a lot easier. And also when you put glue on that end, because you've really kind of um, marred up the surface, the glue penetrates faster and deeper and better into the plastic and giving you a far better bond. Again, like I said, this uh, plastic cement, melts plastic and so it's like the parts are being welded together anybody knows how strong metal on metal being welded together is well plastic's the same way here i'm just using a little bit more glue just on that seam line there this again i will do that periodically throughout this video that's just to reinforce where i've glued parts together uh, i like to have a nice thorough bond when i'm gluing parts together um as you game and everything like that for if you're planning on becoming a gamer or taking these things into a game uh you know the parts are going the models are going to fall off the table and dice are going to hit them and all these kinds of things and you don't want the models breaking and falling apart on you during a game here i'm just demonstrating another part here this is the head and i've loosely fitted in with my finger and i'm going to use this tool here this is the um the um hobby knife tool and I'm using the back end because it's kind of got this hard rubber end to it and I'm using that to push that in rather than using something hard that could damage or even bend the plastic and so and here I'm just using a bit of glue here just to reinforce that point I'm putting a little bit of glue on this peg and I also put it on the seam of the torso uh the armor of the torso again this is all to help make a nice solid bond I'll do it down by the hips and also down by the collar as well and then we'll slap this back piece on. Now the back piece, actually there is a gap here. And as I was mentioning, it's like, oh, there's a freaking gap. Okay, well, the, I, the parts weren't going together properly. So what do I do? Well, again, we could bevel those edges to make that uh, fit better. Or I can just simply take my clippers and I'll knock about a millimeter off, a little less than a millimeter, like a very, very tiny amount. It's really only a small amount that you need to knock off. You don't have to knock off the entire pin. It's not gonna hurt you if you knock that entire pin off. It's just, you know, it's gonna 
slow you up a little bit and you got to make be a little bit more careful as you push to fit these uh, parts together again but after uh we finished with that uh you can see here how the parts are uh sticking together and then i also put a little bit of glue on the uh, seam as well uh again just to make sure that that was all adhering properly we'll do the backpack as well and normally for uh, a lot of painters, people who take their painting uh, very seriously will leave backpacks and other parts uh, off from the model. Typically we call that a sub-assembly and that just makes it easier to get into these areas. But I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to go about this the way many of you out there will most likely go about uh, assembling and painting this model. So, you know, stay tuned for all of that. And we are going to paint this model. Here, I'm just simply slapping the arms into place. Thankfully, the pegs that come out from the torso, they're keyed a specific way, so the arms actually do not rotate on that peg. You'll see there's like a, a half kind of cylinder removed from the peg, and that's uh, just so that the parts fit together properly, and it's uh, it's a keying method, so the parts don't move and everything like that, and it just makes it easier for new people to, to assemble these models and, uh, you know, not make any boo-boos, as it were. Here, we're just slapping a little bit of glue onto the wrists, and then we're gonna um, put the bolt gun in place. Again, like I said, we could have left the backpack and the bolt gun off as sub assemblies, but we're gonna glue them into place and we're gonna paint our way around them just like anybody else out there who's doing this for the first time. Also, the model itself for, is free from the base. A lot of times, a, a lot of painters will leave the miniature of free from their base so that they can paint it entirely and then uh, glue it to its base. But here we're gonna glue it right down to its base. Again, we're gonna do this just like anybody else who's brand new to this hobby, just to demonstrate for all of you that this is really, really straightforward. This is really easy. It's not terribly compli complicated. I'm showing some uh, more, I wouldn't say advanced, but um, some more advanced type techniques as you develop as a hobbyist. One of them being drilling out the barrels. This is a, a little pet peeve of mine. Uh, you can see the uh, the barrel on the gun uh, where the exhaust ports are and also where the bullet should come out is completely solid. So with my hobby knife, I'm gonna plane that surface uh, relatively smooth. Not, It's already smooth to begin with. I'm just cleaning off that mold line and everything like that. And I'm gonna mark out the center with the tip of my uh, hobby knife and then very lightly with applying a little bit of pressure i'm going to try and create like a little dimple in that space i want to make sure that it's nice and center and here you can see i've got pretty close to the center i mean we can measure that i'm sure i'm off but for a miniature it's fine here i'm using the newer citadel drill bit i believe i'm using the one millimeter drill bit for this uh, it comes with two drill bits and then inside that dimple i'm going to rest the drill bit and then very gently uh, applying a bit of pressure in towards the gun. So I'm kind of applying pressure from the right into the left. So uh, anybody who's drilled anything before knows what I'm talking about here. But here you can see, we just simply drill out that barrel. It's pretty even. We stayed within that pilot hole and everything's pretty good. So now we're gonna do those little um, uh, exhausts on the side. Usually only have to do it from one side. And as long as you keep your angle straight and don't move the, um, the drill bit around too much or as you drill, you can see here, I'm trying to keep it fairly straight. Be careful of your finger as well when you're drilling through because it will puncture through. Um, just be careful of that. <laughs> just be mindful again. If you're really, really young and what have you, um, yeah, get, get some get some assistance there because uh, you could potentially hurt yourself there. But that is it. That's the drill uh, barrel drilled out, and it's ready for painting. It looks all the much better, even with just a drill bit drilled uh, drilled out. It already looks better. And so next, we will begin the painting phase. Uh, we're gonna prime this. I think we'll probably do this in gray sear because I think we're gonna do this guys in ultramarine, just like the box art. So stay tuned for that. And a big thank you to everybody for tuning in for this. Big thank you to my patrons. Without your support, these videos are not possible. If you're considering Patreon support, click the link in the description below. Also, there's memberships as well if you're watching this on YouTube. Huge thank you everybody for their support. Take care of your brushes, they'll take care of you, and I will see you in the next painting tutorial.